Air travel is one of the best things living in the modern world. We can get anywhere on Earth in relative comfort at incredible speeds. No more month-long, rat-infested, scurvy-riddled journeys by ship for us. But if you've ever booked a flight from America to Asia, you might have noticed that your flight seems to take a bit of a strange detour. You might be wondering why your plane is following a route that's basically over land when it's able to cross the ocean. But it's definitely not just your flight following the path. So why don't planes fly over the Pacific? Why are all commercial airlines choosing a long detour? And what do they know that we don't? Well, planes actually do fly over the Pacific. Anyone in Hawaii will be able to confirm that for you. Planes obviously have to cross the Pacific to get to them. And they're not the only commercial flight route that crosses the ocean. But that makes our question even more mysterious. Why are so many airlines going out of their way to avoid crossing it when they definitely can fly straight over the ocean? There's a pretty simple answer, but it has nothing to do with the ocean. Instead, you can blame maps for the detour. When you notice the curved route your flight was following, you were probably looking at a flight map, right? And you probably checked where you were going on Google Maps, too. The shortest route between America and Asia is across the Pacific on these flat maps. But 2D maps aren't actually a very good representation of the Earth. If you had a globe handy, you would be able to see why airlines choose this strange curved route. It's the shortest. Sure, if the Earth were flat, that, the Pacific would offer a much faster way, but when you're crossing our spherical planet, it's much quicker to fly over Alaska. It's confusing for sure because we're so used to seeing the traditional flat map, which is pretty deceiving. Simply stretching a string across a globe map offers some surprisingly helpful perspectives. Who knew the Earth was shaped like that? Clearly, that curved route is better. It's the best interest of both the airline and the travelers. But there's other reasons that airlines don't enjoy crossing the Pacific that are less obvious than simply choosing the shortest and cheapest path. Even if it weren't the shortest path, you might still see airlines following this path due to safety. There's actually more than one safety issue when it comes to crossing the sky over the Pacific. The first is the most obvious. In the event of a problem, there's not a lot of opportunities for pilots to make an emergency landing. You definitely don't want to find yourself inside a plane that has crashed landed into the deep, dark ocean. The aircraft will probably sink long before rescuers are able to find you in such a vast space. And the weather is much more likely to contribute to problems out there too. Did you know storms are more likely to occur over bodies of water than over land? Airlines don't just avoid the Pacific. Most flights are planned to minimize the amount of time they spend flying over any large bodies of water because of the storm problem. Specific areas of the Pacific are particularly prone to thunderstorms and turbulent air, so it's not the ideal environment for flying a plane. Then there are the troublesome jet streams to think about. Jet streams aren't something caused by the jet you're flying in. They're huge and powerful air currents that circle the Earth at the same height you'll be flying at. They can be pretty dangerous if your plane gets too close to one. They cause problematic turbulence if you try to fly against them. They can even damage planes. They're also invisible, which doesn't exactly help pilots. However, depending on which way you're going, they can help your flight. If you fly in the same direction as the jet stream current, they can help the flight along a bit, save time and fuel. They usually flow west to east because of the Earth's rotation, so if you're going from America to Asia, coasting along the jet stream above Canada and Alaska can help. So now you won't need to get suspicious the next time you book a ticket for a flight that's following a weird curve. It's pretty likely that the seemingly illogical route is actually helping you out in all sorts of ways. You won't ever look at a map in the same way again, though.